tourism's web of interconnected industries relies heavily on the workforce to deliver tourist experiences. Many tourism workers are in frontline, customer-facing positions. Without the right people to serve in these positions, armed with the right training and positive attitudes, there will almost inevitably be negative results for tourists, for tourism businesses, and tourism destinations. Workforce issues involve the employee, their workplace or employer, and the larger environment or society in which they live. This section focuses on the workplace. In our research, we have called this the meso perspective. The meso perspective has two broad aspects. First are the organizational practices. These include human resource management tasks, such as new employee recruitment and selection, orientation programs, training, compensation, rewards and recognition, performance management, and other related aspects that create a workplace culture. The second aspect is about the job itself. This includes job characteristics, job demands, role descriptions, and connections at work with members of the same occupation or shift or department. The two aspects are interconnected yet distinct. We will focus mainly on the first part, organizational practices. But we would like you to think about how these practices impact on the second aspect, the job itself. To help you understand organizational human resource practices, let's have a quick look at what we call the HR cycle. This can help you to see the way the workforce connects to the organizational level. As you can see, the cycle is organizationally centered, how it decides to treat human resource management issues and then allocate resources to this function. The fact is that some organizations take this cycle very seriously in words and actions, while others do not. Many years of research and observation of best practices in tourism organizations provide overwhelming evidence as to the benefit of investing in their people through well-resourced and well-led HR practices. Nearly all top-performing tourism and hospitality organizations spend a great deal of resources on their workers and the workplace environment. Let's look at an interesting foundational concept that helps explain why investment into organizational practices is so important. The service profit chain proposes a set of connections that sees organizational human resource practices as a critical spark that sets off a chain reaction. These connections start with how the employee feels about the workplace, which influences their satisfaction and their productivity, which positively impacts the customer through customer satisfaction and then has a direct positive link to customer loyalty, which finally results in increased revenue and profit. The starting point of the service profit chain relates to service organizations placing great emphasis on a quality workplace. This concept is often called internal service quality. There are many examples of companies that use these principles. For example, Danny Meyer, a famous New York restaurateur, uses the term virtuous cycle to explain why he places employees as the starting point for how to run a successful restaurant. Same with J.W. Marriott, it's famous for saying, take care of our associates and they'll take care of our customers. Here at the University of Queensland, we recently tested the service profit chain in a research project and were excited to find strong evidence that the workplace environment or internal service, as perceived by the employees, had a direct impact on financial performance in a restaurant industry context. We also found important time lags between the investment in improved internal service practices and future revenue and profit increases. So, what is 
internal service. Internal service quality is the way an employer provides service to the workers. It includes aspects of the workplace environment, such as supportive co-workers and caring supervisors and owners. So what can organizations do to proactively ensure quality internal service? They can hire the right kind of people who fit the team or family. They can ensure that high performance work is recognized and rewarded. They can give employees the tools and training to do the job well. They can also do the simple things, like responding quickly and effectively to employees' questions or issues. In essence, it's about showing care and concern for the worker. So, in tourism, we need high levels of internal service. But we also benefit greatly from a unique and focused working environment or atmosphere, one specifically focused on service quality and the customer. This type of environment is called a service climate. A work climate, it's kind of like the weather. It's how it feels inside the organization. Is it formal? Casual? Focused on customers? Focused on saving money? Or focused on innovation? A service climate is when it feels like customer and service-oriented behaviors are important. One instructive way to understand important elements of a service climate is to reflect on a scale that we use to measure it. For example, in many service organizations, great service is preached by managers, but the provision of great service may not be recognized and rewarded by managers. Similarly, how is service quality measured and tracked and shared within the workplace? Many organizations are great at tracking costs and expenses and sharing that information, but a strong service climate requires service and customer satisfaction to be measured, tracked, shared, and celebrated. I ask you to reflect on your own workplace, from either a worker or even a supervisor's point of view, and ask, how would my workplace score on this set of questions? Okay, by now, you should all be aware of the importance of tourism organizations finding and keeping great employees and providing a great working environment and ensuring a service climate. If only it was that easy. There are always tensions between the expense involved in creating a great working environment and the short-term potential impact on bottom line profit. UQ adjunct professor Danielle Duell, former CEO of Spicer's Hotel Group, often reminded me of the constant tensions in her organization between quality and profit, that nearly every conversation she had with her owners was focused on one or the other, and often in the short run, there can be a clash between the two. Another challenge confronting tourism organizations is that many are in destinations that are remote and far removed from available labor markets. At the University of Queensland, we recently undertook some work helping the Australian government with labour and skills problems in key regional tourism destinations. We found real tensions between the organisation's need for tourism workers and the available supply. There were two critical findings from that work. First, Organisations that focused on being great, best practice employers were more successful. Second, organisations adopting a collaborative approach to employee benefits were more successful. Best practice employers aimed to make work and the working environment fun but at the same time provided career development opportunities in terms of training and management pathways. A collaborative approach is one that develops networks between tourism and non-tourism organisations to make remote regions attractive and livable, especially for mature workers, 
who depend on good schooling and reliable health care for their families. The value of a collaborative approach to workforce issues in tourism can't be overemphasised. Using best practice to do so, even drawing on non-tourism sector examples, provides a really good starting point for this process. Yet another organisational challenge in tourism is the high percentage of young people who work in the tourism sector. One of our research projects examines the challenges created by tourism and hospitality businesses by its predominantly young workforce. Miss Maria Golubovskaya is doing her PhD research on youth workers. Young workers are very different to adult workers. They're in a very different developmental stage mm -hmm. and they should not be treated the same way. Otherwise, organizations miss out on potential opportunities and they face lots of challenges. Similarly, when workers from different generational groups work together, additional challenges are created. Our long-term research project examined the work attitude differences between Generation Y and other generations and found Generation Y workers had very different motivators and needs than other groups. Generation Y workers are often glued to their smartphones and other devices and believe that they are able to multitask at work. Their managers and supervisors are usually older, are often of the belief that there is no place at work for any distractions. While there are mixed results from research on this topic, the issue itself creates workplace friction between generations. We hope you can now see that the tourism workforce is a vital part of the tourism system and that creating the right workplace environment, being aware of the many challenges, and working collectively to solve these all lead to better results for employees, organizations, and destinations.